welcome everybody. I'm Troy Dawson, uh, Apple Steering Committee Chair. With me is Carl George. Um, he's the community platform. He's on the CPE team specifically for Apple. Is that correct, Carl? That is correct. One of the uh, we had a recent announcement about the CPT, CPE was going to staff Apple, and that is now me. That's you. Cool. I was already on the CPE team. I just got my uh, priorities reassigned. <laughs> you got your priorities straight. That's good to hear. <laughs> okay, we're going to start off uh, with some metrics. These are updated as of this this week. They're sort of fun to to, uh, to talk about. Oh, well, that doesn't. Let's see what clip change. There we go. Uh, starting off. I use Matt scripts. So we've got Velociraptorizer, which does the just counting the IP addresses. Uh, this is not totally accurate if you're behind an IR. Uh, uh, <laughs> IRC. I was in the last session, IRC. This is not IRC. Okay. Now, now it's anyway, if you're behind a, a NAT another three-letter acronym, then uh, it only counts as one. So this is giving just a rough approximation, but it's fun to look at. Um, if, if we have them all stacked, we're up above the 5 million um, point. That's really cool to see. Um, in one way, it doesn't matter to Apple. We're probably still going to do what we do no matter how many users, but on another way, it's, it's nice to see that we have that many users. Now, if we break it down, uh, <laughs> Apple 7 looks a little strange here. Most everything has this nice curve up. Um, Carl, can you see my mouse pointer? I can see yes. my mouse pointer. Good. Um, so Steve Smoogin has, has looked at this, and uh, this is... According to him, this is based because uh, Amazon Linux, AWS 2, is based on Rails 7. Uh, and it uses the Apple 7 things. So this is when they changed a whole bunch of, of cloud images to uh, Amazon 7. Uh, we can't tell that for sure because... Amazon 2. Uh, Amazon 2, yeah, thank you. You know what? I need to push your window over here. Um, <laughs> Amazon, too. So last time, if you heard me speak, uh, Rail 6, I was a little concerned because it hadn't really dropped. You know, with Rail 5, we had this drop. Rail 6, we didn't really drop. But it's finally starting to drop, uh, Rail 6, because we've been out of, out of things for a little while. But it's finally starting to drop. And uh, 8, uh, Apple 8 has finally across their path. So that's good to see. Now, this is Brontosaurus of Fire. Uh, it is using, help me out, Carl, um, the Count Me. DNF Count, count me. me. DNF Count Me. I always, I don't know why that doesn't stick in my mind. Uh, so because of that, this is only using Apple 8 on uh, because it needed DNF, a rail seven had yum. So this is only Apple eight on. Um, looking at this, I like the stacked one because it gives us the total numbers. So we one have one million. Troy. The, uh, yeah. It's not just uh, rail eight on or Apple eight on. Uh, rail eight didn't launch with a new enough um, DNF or lib repo or lib DNF. I forget the exact component. I'm sure Neil will correct me in the chat, but the exact component needed in the DNF stack to enable count me wasn't present at rel eight launch time. Mm -hmm. It came in 8.3. So uh, some of the growth we see is systems upgrading from eight point earlier at point releases to 8.3 or higher. Um, but yes, the big difference is that uh, with DNF count me, rather than just counting unique IP addresses, every system gets a unique identifier um, and it, there's an opt-out mechanism, but the, the main thing is, is that this helps solve the NAT problem so we get a lot more accurate usage numbers. Yep. So we'll break out into more of these more. I, I like the stacked ones. Sorry, because, I misspoke. Uh, That's correct. I mean, not a unique identifier, but enough to tell unique systems regardless of NAT. 
I don't okay. know the exact implementation details perfectly. That's right, because it says I've already been counted or I haven't. Yes, been counted. it's a fairly uh, fairly anonymous thing, just not completely, but it's a really good balance between getting the unique systems uh, just from my perspective of how many, not from like keeping an identification of it and uh, pr respecting privacy. It's a good balance. I like it. Cool. Okay, so let's... I was, I was gonna say if we, so the difference is in the other one we were at like 700 70, 750 thousand this one we're at 1.2 million and then if we look at let's let's break it out a little bit um, this is using Carl's scripts not Brandis's right Brandis source of the fight does your scripts have a name no, they are just a script on my desktop. I need to put it in, uh, put it in public Git somewhere, open source it properly, and all that. Uh, but it is basically taking the DNF count me CSV file, doing some Python manipulation, and uh, doing some rudimentary Python Matlib that I am just now learning how to use, which is why they look different. I don't even know exactly what I'm doing yet, but uh, I'll get that open eventually, so pe more people can tinker with it. Maybe get with Matthew and. Uh, see what tools he's using. The charts look similar, like a similar font. So I don't know if he's using matplotlib also in the the dinosaur tools or if uh, or if I should just merge this in with his tools. Okay. I need to look at his matplotlib settings and make the charts look more alike. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. yeah, the big, big thing here is, uh, like you said, breaking out the different distributions uh, because that's part of the count me thing too is um, it does report which what the system identifies itself as. So Whereas, you know, we suspect in those big spikes for Apple 7 that it's Amazon Linux 2, which is sort of RHEL 7 based. They have a lot of RHEL 8 and Fedora things backported to it. But uh, with this new method, we can actually tell what systems are identifying themselves as. So we know that CentOS Linux is the most popular thing as far as consumers of Apple. Um, RHEL is a, a second, which is great to see, you know. RHEL being popular ensures that a lot of these things happen. Um, I know that Neil yeah. said before that one of the best things you can do to support Fedora is pay for a RHEL subscription. Um, I'm not saying that. Somebody that doesn't work for Red Hat is saying that. I just like that take. Uh, I like having a job, and I'm sure a lot of the other Red Hatters <laughs> do too. So it's good to see RHEL growing as well. Um, and then we have a few more. Uh, don't try and squint too hard at those lower lines because uh, in the next let's... slide, we actually break those down a little further with a different scale. So that way I took out in this one, I I just changed the criteria for like the range. Effectively, it takes RHEL and CentOS Linux out of it. And this makes uh, makes it where you can actually see those lower lines. And I even put a lower limit on it too, because there's more, at the, more below this that would just be like a bundle of lines at the bottom. You couldn't tell any difference at all, but we'll go into further ones later. Uh, some really neat things here. Uh, I'm realizing now that I don't have the speaker notes. Troy has all those. So if I forget something oh. I put in the notes, uh, <laughs> Ping me at, sorry. Raise your, shout out at me. Some of them write my own notes and so, but you're you're presenting so. Uh, yeah. So yeah, CentOS I, stream. I, is growing? Go ahead. Yeah, I I really like this CentOS. Yeah, I was gonna say I like the CentOS stream growing trend. I Absolutely. I'm really coming to like CentOS stream uh, myself. So I'll let you go I'm into the, pull up the slide deck myself, so I can actually see the speaker notes. That's probably the right. <laughs> right That's a good idea. Well, I'll. Do the one thing. Uh, I don't know what happened with Alma Linux. Somebody uh, uninstalled Alma Linux. Rocky is on the same, uh, you know, a, a nice slope. And we see that they both have not over overtaken Oracle Linux, but it's, well, it's not going down, but uh, right. they've both Everyone's overtaken growing, it by long ways. It is, it is yeah. notable that both Rocky and Alma, you know, despite starting after Oracle Linux and Oracle Linux didn't just start with eight. They've been around for a while. Uh, they've already surpassed it in popularity, which uh, for some people is understandable. Uh, there's some animosity in the community towards Oracle for various reasons, but uh, they are all clones of rel like CentOS is the model that CentOS is moving away from. And uh, the whole idea is that they functionally are identical. So uh, it's expected that they will keep growing as CentOS, CentOS Linux eight reaches its end of life and people either transition to to rel CentOS stream or one of these new new clone distributions and cloud linux aren't they the sponsors of alma linux yes so cloud linux is on that chart as well uh cloud linux was already a distribution they're not a real clone 
they're more like uh, Amazon Linux. They're a rel derivative. Uh, they do not try to maintain com exact compatibility. They upgrade a few things here and there. Uh, I can't speak super authoritatively about their distribution. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe Jack's around the conference later today, and people could ask him if they if they're curious. But that is my rudimentary understanding of what they do with that distribution. I do know that in the future they are planning to transition. Since they started Alma Linux to be an actual real clone and stay identical, what they would like to do is make. Uh, Cloud Linux, instead of being its own unique thing, have that be based on all Linux so that they don't have to build the same things twice that don't diverge, which is a logical step to take. Yep. Okay. One more quick thing. Uh, I've seen the chat people are oh. talking about Oracle's Apple. Uh, for a long time, we thought that Oracle's numbers were way underrepresented because they run their own Apple repository. But come to find out, I looked into it a little closer. They don't enable that by default and DNF install Apple release doesn't do anything. They 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 have a separate name for their release package. It doesn't provide Apple release. So anyone following the act, the instructions to get Apple uh, are going to get the public Apple and be represented in this chart. You have to go out of your way to pick the Oracle app version of Apple, which is I wish they didn't call it Apple uh, because it's not Apple. It doesn't have it has additional packages that aren't in Apple that they're not contributing back, and it also has it doesn't have everything that's in Apple. So it is not Apple, um, but it's not like that's a trademark name or anything, so we can't stop them. Um, mm. Either way, you have to go out of your way to use that. I feel like we, for a long time we thought these numbers on this chart were, were misrepresented, but I feel like it's actually pretty accurate now after looking into it a little bit. Okay. I think this next one's an interesting. Uh, we're, get, we're getting down to the 100 to 5K systems per week. Yes. So Cloud Linux, you can see their growth pattern a little bit more, which I'm sure they're happy about. You know, that keeps uh, that keeps at least a few engineers that also work on Alma Linux employed. So that's a good thing in general, just like it's a good thing that, you know, RHEL's growing and keeping, you know, Red Hatters in, employed. Uh, Virtuoso Linux is another one. I don't, I'm not really sure. A lot of these I don't know anything about or know very, I'll, very little about. I know Springdale Linux. Um, back with Scientific Linux, we had some people that were debating between going between. It, it's done by uni oh, university. Um, right. It's been around for a while. And we'll see the. Well, we'll, there's one more chart where it breaks down further, so you can see the difference. So this is between 30 and 200 systems, you know, hitting the repositories per week. And wow, you can see Springdale above a lot of the other ones. There's a few in here that. Uh, I know that I had never heard about until I started looking at this data, um, um, like uh, Red Hawk Linux and Anolis OS. It's also possible some of these are products based on rail sources or CentOS sources that are just also that also have Apple en enabled. Um, I tried looking into some of these. Some of them, their websites are not in English, and I am I am a dumb American that only speaks English, so I was lost. Um, <laughs> what about but, that? S-U-S-E one. That's that's an interesting That one really surprised name. me. I tweeted about that recently. <laughs> I noticed it show up in these uh, charts, and I haven't. I can't find any kind of public announcement about this. Um, well, I looked around, but I tweeted. I tweeted about it, um, and maybe maybe it's a conspiracy theory. But after I tweeted about it, you can see that those that was right around where it started dropping. <laughs> the numbers dropped to zero after I publicly noticed it. Um, my suspicion is that this is something they're working on. Maybe it comes to fruition. Maybe it doesn't. But uh, I, I don't. I, they they realized after I tweeted that DNF count me is enabled and either deleted all the systems or turned off Apple. <laughs> well, uh, and who, Majero, there's, no, there's no kind of proof that this isn't just somebody just playing a prank and taking this, some CentOS boxes, changing the release field, and then just and running. Yeah. I mean, but that seems to run nearly 80 boxes at one point, that seems like a pretty pretty elaborate prank. Not impossible with well, cloud automation. I, uh, somebody somebody came up with Majero. Am I pronouncing that right? It's the old Mandriva has mm. forked. And, anyway, uh, but I tried, I, I saw them pop up. I don't think they had 30. There was like one or two, and I thought, that's strange. And um, for Majero, which is a Mandrake derivative, uh, I tested, and you could install 5,000 out of the 7,000 uh, Apple 8 packages on it. Even though they're so, not trying to be real compatible, per se. They're not trying to be real compatible. So I'm not going to say Suze isn't Apple compatible. It's 
quite possible somebody did that. But you're right, it dropped. Okay. Um, well, if this is a thing they're working on, it seems like they were at least working on it. Go back real quick. Uh, they started showing up there in August, it looks like. So uh, I don't know. Maybe one day we'll see another uh, another rail clone coming out from uh, a different vendor, and that would be that would be interesting. We would welcome them into the uh, the greater Red Hat ecosystem. That would be more people using Apple and more people using rail source code, and conversely, more people that if all of these clone distributions, the big thing that uh, I keep reminding people is, is that if they want to be a clone, they're bug for bug compatible. If they want to fix a bug in their distribution, they've got to come to CentOS because CentOS is now the contribution path to get a change into RHEL, which is becomes their sources. CentOS stream. Yes. <laughs> I am uh, looking I forward to the future where the only CentOS is CentOS stream, <laughs> so it's much less ambiguous to talk about. That's true. We still got four years for that. Uh, Think I, about I it like this. Where... The contribution path is CentOS, the CentOS project. How about that? That's a good idea. CentOS project. Uh, we're halfway through, so I'm going to, we're still in metrics, sure. so I'm going to pop on through. Um, this is architecture, and, and to be honest, it's actually lower than this. Uh, XA6 actually has more than 98%, but this just shows it. So R64 is almost 2%, but not quite. So I'm, I'm showing this one before I show the next ones. So by architecture, uh, CentOS Linux, of course, is still the first. For XA664, Red Hat Linux is there. And on this one, it goes Stream, Alma, Oracle, Rocky, which is interesting on an XA664. But then when we look at the next, Arch64, um, we see, you know, CentOS, actually CentOS Stream passes RHEL on Arch64. That's that's an interesting thing. Then we go Rocky. So for whatever reason, people are liking Rocky on Arch64. Uh, then we go to Oracle and Alma. Uh, PowerPC64 isn't a surprise there. Red Hat for the majority. And I didn't even have to change this slide for the last two times. S390X, if you can afford that, you you are using rail. Um, this is one that I, I'm sort of waiting to see what it looks like in a year, but I think this is age over time. So the light blue, these are, uh, I think of them as containers. They're, they're throwaway machines. Um, basically, you run it up, run a test or two, but the, they don't last over a week. And and my experience is probably they less live less than a day. Some of them probably minutes. Uh, the two to four weeks are more the the test machines or um, what I picture is uh, people doing a one month once a month you reinstall your machines. That's, that's one way to keep them updated. Make sure you have everything clean. Uh, five to 24 weeks, that's the three-month span. Um, to be honest, uh, I'm sort of, I don't know why you would just keep it for three months. Maybe it's the same as one month, but you have three months. And then 25-plus weeks are those long-term servers that enterprise releases are more known for. Uh, and again, it starts with the red thing because, as we talked about earlier, the this count me stuff didn't even happen until 8.4. So give us a year and it'll, this, this one will probably be a boring graph. Okay. Oh, we're into the actual stuff. Uh, did you have any more things about, you know, That's we only got 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's get into the actual stuff. Uh, many of you might know, you might not know. Uh, we we've transitioned from, the Fedora Wiki to Fedora Docs with Apple. Um, we're actually on the front Fedora Docs page. Just click on us there, get there. Uh, we still are doing some tweaking. Some of the pages didn't get transferred right. Um, there was a big push to get that up there, and then people have sort of been relaxing, but we are still updating the docs. Uh, let's go for the next one. Apple, hey, do you have your notes here? Yes, I have my notes now. 
Okay, good. Because I actually can't see my. I'm notes. acting like a professional presenter, so I've got the uh, the the notes, the speaker notes now. <laughs> um, Epoly, one thing we want to say, one thing, and this is very recent news, uh, and I'm pretty sure everybody here. Fedora 35 was released, but so was uh, RHEL 8.5 was released. Those packages are now in the Apple 8 build route. Uh, if if you have a library or package that needs to be rebuilt, rebuild it now. Um, hopefully you did it in Apple 8 next, but uh, uh, Apple 8.5 is the next big one. Before we segue there to the next slide, Troy, uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up is that Rel8 launched with uh, a, lo a lot of what for uh, for a mm. lot of with a lot of missing uh, development packages. That was kind of a focused effort from Rel to limit what they uh, limit their su uh, support implications. And I get both sides of it. I understand some of the justifications for it, but also that has side effects where some Apple packages need those development packages. Now, typically, you can just add software to Apple that's not in RHEL, but if the package was built by RHEL but only partially shipped, like, say, the library is shipped in RHEL but the development package is, isn't, then that means only Red, only Red Hat can build against that those development headers, which is very painful for Apple. Uh, we've hammered on that issue, and the process we have in place now is that uh, users can request additional packages, development packages be added to the uh, code-ready builder repository in RHEL, there's still some support implications to that, um, but we've had some moderate amount of success with getting new dev development packages added. So if there was an Apple package you wanted to add to Apple 8 that wasn't possible before, um, if you're missing a development package that RHEL should be providing, file a bug or look and see if there's already one, uh, already a bug, and maybe even just check and see if it's already been handled because we have far more development packages than RHEL 8 shipped with. So things are getting a lot better. Yeah, so we actually have that. <laughs> well, I just want to add on that. We do have that documented in the Apple 8 docs, uh, how to do that now. And one of the shifts that they did internally to Red Hat was it used to be the standard answer was no. Uh, but then they shifted to allow it for the developers so the or the maintainers. The maintainers might still tell you no, and they might have a reason. Uh, but far more of them have said yes. And I've been grateful because my Apple 8 stuff, or the KDE stuff, finally is all building on Apple 8. Okay, next. But transitioning to Apple 8 next. Yeah, so we mentioned the RHEL 8.5 release and how some things need to be rebuilt. Uh, def the big one is uh, anything that builds against QT. QT got rebased, I think it was 5.12 to 5.15 in RHEL 8.5. Mm -hmm. yep. So... We knew about that ahead of time because of CentOS Stream and the benefits that gives us now, seeing what's coming in RHEL sooner. We started Apple, Apple 8 Next, I believe, I think it launched back in June, if I remember right. And uh, what that does is instead, Apple 8 builds against RHEL 8, Apple 8 Next builds against CentOS Stream 8. You us Packagers usually don't need to worry about it because typically pack uh RHEL packages and libraries are stable across the life of the distribution and you know library versions don't change. And so that a pack to the point where a package built against RHEL 8.0 has a good chance of working on RHEL 8.10 at the end of its life. Not always, uh, it's not a hundred percent. Sometimes, like we said with, KT, with QT, uh, rebases and library SO name changes are necessary. And when those happen, uh, the packages have to be rebuilt in Apple. Same thing with other third-party repositories. What Apple 8 Next allowed was for people like Troy and anyone else to build uh, their Apple, Apple 8 packages against CentOS Stream, pick up those library changes early, and offer compatible packages to CentOS Stream 8 users. That was a big improvement because up until then, there was a small percentage of Apple packages that wouldn't install on CentOS Stream, those things that were going to need to be rebuilt. This also has the benefit of anyone using RHEL 8.5 on day one before Apple 8 packages have had a chance to be rebuilt can temporarily enable Apple 8 Next to get a compatible build installed. It really helped us be ready. Having Apple 8 Next helped us be ready for the 8.5 launch, and it was a lot better. Yep. Uh, I know personally I used to have to do that all offline, and then I had to upload it to my own little KDE repo for people. 
so much easier, so much nicer. Um, and it's it's making things easier for me. Let's go for our next one. Apple yeah. 9 next. So this, this is, is I think what yeah, I think this is what people really want to hear about. Right. I've heard from several people that uh, CentOS Stream 9 isn't ready until F they have Apple for it. And that's what we're working on. That is part of the CPE to, stash, to staff uh, Apple initiative and what I'm working on. We are very close. We have most of the pieces in place. Uh, there's an issue right now with the Fedora S390 builders starting up uh, nine build routes. Uh, it's a mainframe thing with S390, and we're hoping to get that resolved next week. Um, and then at some point, we'll, uh, very, some, po some point very soon, as soon as that's resolved, however long that takes, we'll be launching Apple 9 Next. Uh, the big difference that'll be a little confusing is that with 8, Apple 8 Next is a layer on top of Apple 8. You, should be, you can't use it by itself. You're supposed to use Apple 8, and if you need it, Apple 8 Next also. When Apple 9 Next launches, it's going to be a standalone repo uh, initially. That'll be the primary location for, for packagers to target to get uh, pack extra packages out there for CentOS Stream 9. But once RHEL 9 launches, then we can actually create Apple 9 proper. At that point, the focus shifts where Apple 9 is the primary target for packagers, and most things built there will just work it. We're on all, all RHEL 9 uh, and CentOS Stream 9 based distributions. But then Apple 9 Next will still be, go on to exist for when new library changes happen in CentOS Stream for the next minor release and a package has to be rebuilt and it'll get back to the state that 8 is in now. Cool. I'm, I'm excited for it. I can't wait for those S390 filters to come online. Okay. Apple 9. We, you already talked a little bit about it. What? What, what about Apple 9? The here? only other thing I'll uh, mention is uh, part of that transition whenever the the idea is that we have Apple 9 next available as soon as possible before the RHEL 9 launch, let packagers add packages to it and build out that content set, uh, the community packagers, not Red Hat. We're not, Red Hat Red Hat staffing of Apple has nothing to do with building specific packages. It's about making, thing, making the infrastructure available and making things run smoothly. But one, we want to have it available, have packagers start adding stuff to it, and then at RHEL 9 release time, set up Apple 9, and then we plan to do, this is a plan that Mohan came up with that sounds amazing. We all liked it. Uh, basically take all of the Apple 9, Apple 9 Next packages, do a mass branch for Apple 9, and a mass rebuild against RHEL 9, exact RHEL 9 content. Because at that point, Apple 9 Next will have already moved on to uh, RHEL 9.1. So, or yep. sorry, CentOS Stream 9 will have already moved on to RHEL 9.1. So we need to do a rebuild to make sure it's 100% compatible at launch time. And we'll just pre-populate all of that in Apple 9 and hopefully have that available within a matter of weeks after the RHEL 9 launch, which is a big improvement over, you know, I, I looked into it and Apple 8, Apple 8 launched three months after RHEL 8 launch. Um, and on top of the problem with the devil packages I mentioned earlier, Growing Apple 8 content has been a challenge, and we'd like to make that less painful going forward. Yep. Okay. Oh, we're very short on time. Apple and Red Hat. Is there any more? We know that you got hired, Carl. Is there anything more that Red Hat is doing? There's a big shift in focus to enabling Apple and making things possible and getting out of our way. Things like shipping the devil packages, supporting us, uh, we're growing the team. We actually have uh, two people inside the CPE team. Um, we say hired on this team, but there's sub teams and all this other stuff. But there are two people within mine and Troy's team, CPE, that are specifically assigned to work on Apple. And we're hoping to grow that in the future. For those clarifying, it is not me. Um, although I do the, the the KDE builds, I'm on the, I'm the Apple committee chair. I am not, my priorities unlike Carl's, are not towards Apple. Uh, Work-wise. Work-wise, yes. <laughs> Personally-wise, they are. Uh, Work-wise, that is not what my priorities are at work. Let's see. Do we have anything else? Uh, okay, i am just got a minute. Uh, I am currently rebuilding the KDE for uh, Apple 8. Uh, it's about halfway through. It should be done by Monday. Um, there will be one update after that. That is the Plasma. I don't have it written down even in my notes. Plas the next Plasma. Um, 
which is literally coming out. It's in Rawhide. It's in Fedora 35. It'll be hitting Fedora 34 within a week or two. Um, so there will be one update after that, uh, and then we'll stabilize and uh, do that. So I just wanted to mention that on there. Okay, questions and answers. Problem is, is we're low on time. Carl, do we I have any questions? You can ask us questions. <laughs> Yep. Is, is there any questions and answers real quick? That I didn't see any is... coming through the chat. Oh, there is Q&A. Uh, Matthew asks, how does Apple Next differ from ELN Next or whatever it was just announced on the Fedora le Devil List? I have not wow. seen that. I suspect that is so, talking about the ELN Extras. ELN Extras, there is a document coming up on that. I'm actually working on that this week. Uh, but in short, uh, ELN Extras is built on ELN. <laughs> you know, uh, Apple Extras is built on CentOS Stream. Um, that's that's the short answer. Will they automatically go over there? We have three years to debate that answer, that question. So two years, two years to debate that question. Considering we don't Whatever. automatically branch Apple 7 stuff to Apple 8 and all on, so on, I can't imagine we would do anything automatic for EL, for yeah. ELN Extras. Yep. Um, I don't see any other questions. I do see a poll, but uh, I'll worry about that. Um, well, thank you very much for letting us, for letting us, let's see. Do they have any other things? No, just Wait. references. Oh. I got another thing before we go. I want to talk about why it's dinosaur names with the stats. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's to make, it, uh, it's a joke between Smooge and I really, but basically, um, looking at these stats, because we don't do, you know, telemetry or invasive metrics at all, it's not like a hard science or a, um, there's a lot of speculative science and it is a lot like digging through layers of dirt in archaeology to figure out what these dinosaur bones mean. And we've got a lot of things where, oh, we thought that was a triceratops leg, but actually it's something else going on in there. So they should be taken <laughs> with that grain of that, that view. And so dinosaur names for these scripts. That's basically what's going on there. I like it. <laughs> That's um, cool. Don't worry, everyone. You can't be late to uh, the next talk because the speaker's here. Right, exactly. And now I'm <laughs> going to go over to that session. I'll see you there in a it's minute. It's like you can't be late coming back from lunch if you're having lunch with the boss.